You never stop working. Come on, church. Let the praise him. Come on. Australia to our live stream wherever you're watching the broadcast in the world we give you warm greetings on a beautiful winter day in Sydney yes amen hallelujah and today is Pentecost Sunday Woo! what a awesome. great celebration it is yes it is and we are starting a brand new series today titled Miracles, Miracles. on Demand wow I can hardly wait to start Amen. sharing this series. I've got so much in me that needs to come out. Woo! Now, if, <laughs> if you wonderful people draw it out of me Amen. today. Amen, we will. I can guarantee you that we're going to see some powerful Amen. things manifest. <laughs> but I have some testimonies just very quickly. This is a, a, a beautiful testimony that was sent to us from some people who watch our broadcast and they live in Ulladulla. So if you don't know where Ulladulla is, that's yeah. in New South Wales, down, down the coast. Down south, yep. And uh, a beautiful card they sent me, and they said we wanted to share a testimony regarding our oldest daughter, uh, who was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis about two years ago. Um, you may recall um, me messaging you for prayer. Your encouraging words spurred me and my husband to remain faithful in prayer for our daughter to believe by faith that nothing is impossible Amen. for God. Woo. Well, after much prayer for her, we had our annual colonoscopy and the specialist doctor called me to say that my daughter's colon and the inflammation inside has healed up. Hallelujah! Woo. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! We knew it was God and no one else we give him praise yes, for it. Lord. Thank you, thank you so much, Amen. awesome church, for your prayers. How awesome is that? Isn't that wonderful. Hallelujah. Woo! Here's another testimony. It just from, goes to yeah. show you that you can receive a miracle even online. Right. Right. <laughs> you don't have to be here. Right. Just stretch out your faith. That's Wherever right. you're watching from today, yep. God can. God can. God can God do can. it. So just reach out Hallelujah. as your faith rises up and take your miracle today. Amen. Hallelujah. Here's another one from last Sunday's D-Day. Praise God. Praise when God. Pastor Gary gave an altar call for addictions, I went forward as the Lord led, but still weary about what addictions were. Deep inside, I know we all are addicted to something. The Holy Spirit began convicting me about my spending habits. <laughs> that I had gotten addicted to. No one's laughing. Once, once, <laughs> once I had admitted to having, you know, some spending addictions can lead people yeah. into a lot of debt. Bad. I prayed for people over the years that were in massive debt yeah. financially because they just, it was an addiction. Yeah. It's, what do they call it? Retail therapy. therapy. <laughs> once I admitted to having an addiction, my eyes were open to what they were. You see, that's the big key. Yeah to getting free from an addiction. You have to admit that you've yeah. got one. Over the past week, I noticed my cravings for certain foods were reduced. Woo. I felt full after eating very little and had no desire for sweets or chocolate as before. Woo. The Holy Spirit never came down hard. Over the next week, He began to show me how wrongful management of my money was robbing me of my blessings. Wow. Every week, my salary was going from my bank account to bless all of those habits. Wow. wow. <laughs> I realize my addiction came from, a, from an ungrateful heart. Wow. You know, we were talking about that this yeah, morning, driving to church. Yeah. And you were saying how, it's amazing how in such a powerful time of worship, what were you saying? I was just saying that, 
you know, um, how it must grieve God's heart when we come to church and we can't even just say thank you. Can't even just open our mouth just to say one word to Him. Yeah, and uh, from my experience of deliverance, I can tell you right now, the fastest way to get delivered from depression is start being grateful. Amen. Simply Amen. waking up and saying thank, thank you, you Lord. and being grateful thank for you what Lord. you have. Thank you, Lord. And not ungrateful yes, for Lord. what you don't have. Amen. Thank you, Father. Um, the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to God's goodness and that He had Praise set God. me apart in my workplace to Praise show the God. blessing was upon my life. Thank you, Pastor Gary and the Holy Spirit. I'm delivered and I Amen. thank God for it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. How awesome. One more. One more powerful one. Hi, Pastor Gary. I have a testimony of a lump that's gone. I found, I found the lump while I was in the shower a month ago. I prayed over it a couple of occasions, got prayer at church. God reminded me. I checked to see if it was there. It's gone. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Never to come back again. Never to come back. Hallelujah. Every week there are testimonies. Yes, and if you there have is. a testimony, would you email it to me? Gary at awesomechurch.com and we'll share it. Because Amen. it builds faith, it yes, encourages it people. Hallelujah. And it's good news. Amen. Amen. Come on, church, lift your hands to heaven, Thank everybody. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, I want everyone Praise praying you, in the Holy Spirit right now. Let's Today, Monday, have your way, Holy Spirit. Move amongst us right now. Today, Lord. Today, Spirit of God, you are welcome. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kira Kashandarama, Kira Shendere 
God bless you. Thank you, worship team. Let's get into it. Amen. Hallelujah. Miracles on demand. Woo. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready to go on a journey yes. this month? Yes. I want to build your faith up to such a level that you'll simply say it and it will manifest. Are you with me? Yes. Miracles on demand. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4. And God confirmed the message. Glory to God. I mean, you ought to give God praise right there. God confirmed the message. May He confirm the message today. How? By giving signs and wonders, come on, and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit whenever he chose. The Passion Bible says it like this, then God added his witness to theirs. He validated their ministry with signs, astonishing wonders, all kinds, come on, all kinds of powerful miracles and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which he distributed as he desired. Miracles on demand. Miracles in the Bible fall into one of these areas. Salvation, healing, deliverance, provision. And I know there's a lot of talk right now about high inflation, And every time you turn on the news, the power bill's going to double, it's going to triple. Well, guess what? Your salary's going to double and triple as well. Listen, you better pay attention today and you better receive from the prophet. You better take hold of his words. God's speaking through me today to encourage you, to lift you up. You put too much attention on what the world says, you're going to fall into depression. You, You won't even turn any lights on when you go home. You'll be sitting there in the morning going, (laughs) and your kids will be sitting there going, Dad, can we please put the heater on? No, no, no. You're going to be like Elvis. (laughs) And I'm not plugging the movie. A miracle, listen, a miracle of salvation is where a person feels lost, separated, or disillusioned with life and is ready to give up. But God intervenes and rescues that person into new life with Christ. That's a miracle of salvation. A miracle of healing is where a person has lost hope and is suffering to the point where they just don't know what to do anymore. But God intervenes and restores that person physically into divine health with Christ. A miracle of deliverance is where a person is bound with oppression, depression, or an evil spirit, keeping them imprisoned in their soul. But God intervenes and releases that person into freedom with Christ. Glory to God. A miracle of provision, someone say provision, is where a person is desperately in need, but God intervenes and replenishes that person so that nothing is left wanting. And there are many examples of God supernaturally intervening to bring about salvation, healing, deliverance, and provision. And you can add to those words, in other words, God rescuing, God restoring, come on, God releasing and God replenishing, supernatural to show that He is Almighty God and to demonstrate His powerful love for His church. 
I'm believing God that by faith we will see a demonstration of God's miraculous, come on, salvation, healing, deliverance, and provisional power manifest right here in Jesus' name. We got to believe for that. I got to build your faith up to believe that God can. Because whatever you focus on, you gain more faith to believe for it. Because faith, come on, faith comes. Someone say, faith come. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews 11, 1 says that faith is a substance. So when I preach the word today, that supernatural substance called faith will come into this sanctuary and where there is faith, there are miracles. So we need faith. We got to get faith. Some say, I got to have faith. Because, come on someone, oh, glory to God. Faith is acting on God's word. It's greater than simply believing or simply saying, I believe. Because to believe means to take true facts presented. But even the devil believes, but he has no faith. But to have faith means you are, come on, acting on the Word of God. And there's a huge difference between the two. Most Christians believe, but they're not in faith. How so? They believe, but they're not acting in the Word. The moment you begin to act on the Word, you step into the, come on, the faith zone. Just like Pastor Joanna said, you turn that light on, but you got to turn it on. You see, the power is there. Come on, someone, ready to light up the room. But you've got to turn that power on. Your faith turns that power on. Man. Woo! Come on. Woo! Most Christians believe and praise God for that. But how many are actually acting on the Word? Now, that's a great revelation right there. I mean, if you get anything today and you go home and say, man, faith means to act on the word, you would have learnt a golden nugget. If you believe it, you'll see it. If you expect it, you'll experience it. If you demand it, you'll see it manifest. I need to say that again. Because you're going to hear me say that many, 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 many times this month and this whole year. Come on, help me with this. If you believe it, you'll see it. If you expect it, you'll experience it. If you demand it, It'll manifest. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. Come on, in Mark 5, 28. For she said, if I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. What did she do? She believed, she expected, she put a demand on it because she had faith in what Jesus could do and she got her miracle. I got to try a little bit harder today. A miracle, listen, a miracle is God's, you see, you see, that shows you the level of faith that most believers have for miracles. They don't have much for it. But that's okay because we're going to do a series on it to build your faith up. Come on, we need to start believing that God is the God of miracles. Because right now in most churches, the God of miracles isn't there any longer. It's the God of lamingtons and nice music and smoke machines, big screens and skinny jeans. But we've got to change all of that. Don't knock my jeans. And don't knock my screens. <laughs> and the only smoke is the ones outside having a fag right now. Fag. Did I still say that? And I meant it the smoke type. A miracle is God's supernatural power that overrides the natural laws of time. Come on. Space and matter. A miracle, I like this, a miracle is God's process of manifesting creation on the earth. God spoke it, and it is. To understand the power of miracles on demand, you've got to have a revelation of the power of God's holy word. This is so important. I never saw miracles until I got a revelation of the power in this book. Man, the power that is contained in my hand, this is like nuclear, hallelujah. Man, it's radioactive, glory to God. The Bible. Woo!
Isaiah 55, 11. Come on, it's Pentecost Sunday. Let's have some fun. Amen. <laughs> Isaiah 55, 11 is a scripture you should all memorize. Our Bible says, come on, so shall my word, this is God speaking, so shall my word that, come on, goes forth from my mouth, it shall not, but it shall what? Accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. Now, God said that. God said, when I speak a word out, it goes out, it'll never come back, it It'll never come back and say, sorry, boss, we couldn't do the job. The word always comes back, boss, job done. It's been accomplished. Man, oh man. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Woo. The power of God's word that he has already spoken, which we hold in our hands, it continues to resonate now and for eternity. Everything, listen, everything is upheld by God's holy word. Hebrews 1 verse 3 says, The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. Watch this. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. Everything in your life is being sustained by your word or it could be God's word. If you sustain it with your own word, it may disappoint you in the day of reckoning. But when your life is built, come on someone, on the rock, when the wind blows and the storms come, you will not be shaken because it's going to be the word of God that's going to sustain you and keep you in Jesus' name. You got to build it on the Word. Got to build it on the Word. This is why the Word of God is so important. Church, it's our guarantee. It's God's will for our lives. Can you give me a guarantee? Yeah, here it is right now, the Holy Bible. There's your guarantee right now. And if you don't have your Bible with you today, you don't have the guarantee. See, wherever I go, I bring the guarantee. Because this guarantee, oh man, this guarantees me victory over any situation. All I need to do is just find out in the fine print what it says. And I go to the devil and I say, devil, you might throw sickness, you might throw fear, you might throw poverty, you might throw lack, but I want you to know what the fine print says in the guarantee. God says, I guarantee to set you free, to heal you and deliver you. Right? Got to go to the guarantee. Someone say, I'm guaranteed. I got a guarantee. It's in my hand right now. Woo! It's God's will for our lives. If God said it, then, hallelujah, I can have it. And he would never have said it if he didn't mean it. Because this book is our inheritance, praise God. It's called the last will and testament of Jesus Christ. This is what Jesus left behind for his church. It's like someone you love passes away and you go to the executor and they open it up and they say, well, this is what your great rich uncle left you. Hallelujah. And you're just sitting there eagerly waiting to hear, what did I get? What did I get? Well, every time you open up the Bible, man, you're opening up what belongs to every child of God. Not for one, not for this one, not for that one, not for this one. God is no respecter of people. It's for every son and daughter who loves Jesus Christ. Someone say, it's mine. It's mine. Glory to God. Yeah. Hebrews 1 verse 3 from the AMP. Look what it says. The sun is the radiance and only expression of the glory of our awesome God. Reflecting God's Shekinah glory. The light being, the brilliant light of the divine. And, come on, hear the riddle with me. And perfect imprint of his Father's essence. Here we go. And upholding and maintaining and propelling all things. The entire physical and spiritual universe by his powerful word. Carrying the universe along to its predetermined goal. How powerful is that? 
That's what the Word of God does and will do for your life when you start to meditate and take hold of God's promises. Now, here's a miracle based on everything that I've just said. Matthew 8, verse 5. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. Six words. Not I'll try, not let's see what happens, not let me have, take a look. He said, I'll come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. The CEV Bible says, just give the order. Someone say, just give the order. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found, come on, such great faith. Only place in the Bible he says great faith. To a centurion, a non-Jew, he says, I've not found such great faith, not even in Israel. What was so great about this man? Because this centurion, he recognized authority when he saw it. When he saw Jesus, he took a step back and said, guys, watch this Nazarene. This guy's got power. Man, this is the one. Oh, man, he walks on water. He calms the storm. I heard he raises the dead. I heard about that story where he gave sight to the blind. He went to the Gadareans and he delivered that man that we bound up with chains. Jesus went there and with one word, he cast that spirit out of him. 5,000 spirits came out of that man. He said, man, you better watch this Jesus of Nazareth. He says, Jesus, you just say the word. That's enough for me. I know because I'm a man who understands authority. You see, this is why it's so important that you are under authority, that you understand the power of accountability and submission because even Jesus was under the authority of the Holy Spirit. The centurion recognized that Jesus had authority, glory be to God, and he said, just give the order, it'll be done. Just give the order. I am a man under authority. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way and, this is so important that you get it, as you have believed, not as I have believed, as you have believed, so let it be done for you. Do you see how important it is that we take true the facts that are presented to us? When we're presented with the facts of the Bible, it's time for us to start believing. And once we start believing, we take a step of faith and we say, God, I make a demand on what I believe. And by faith, I command healing to manifest. It'll manifest. It has to manifest. Because when you come under authority, you instigate, you initiate the power of the Spirit of God to manifest with inside of your life. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant, come on, was healed that same hour. The servant was not even in the presence of Jesus. It was the faith of the centurion that released that loved one that was there at home crippled in bed, but the centurion recognized Jesus as the Son of God and said, you just say the word, it'll be done. Church, we got to get to that point where we just say, Pastor Gary, just say what the word says and I will see the manifestation of it. Take hold of the word. The centurion believed. He expected. He put a demand on Jesus and the miracle manifested. He believed he expected, he put a demand. Remember those three words, believe, expect, demand. And he received his miracle, it manifested. He said to Jesus, just say the word. Come on, someone. We've got to be like the centurion and take hold of God's word because God has spoken and it shall surely come to pass. You see, today in most people, most churches, most people don't believe in miracles. And to be honest, much of the body of Christ 
doesn't believe in miracles. And the reason is because it's not talked about. It's not preached. It's not taught the principles of God's word pertaining to miracles. And when it's not taught, it's not preached, it's not spoken about, people have no faith for it. Because faith, come on, comes when you hear the word of God. The Bible says that the woman with the issue of blood, come on, heard about Jesus and what he could do. This brought faith to her. And today, glory to God, is Pentecost Sunday, which is the day the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the disciples, baptizing them with fire and power. John the Baptist prophesied this when he baptized Jesus in the River Jordan, Matthew 3.11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he who is coming after me is mightier than I whose sandal straps I am not worthy to carry he will baptize you with what the Holy Spirit and fire glory to God what is the fire for the fire brings heat the fire gets you hot glory to God the fire burns away sin it burns away the impurities it purifies the believer when the Holy Spirit comes upon your life you need the Holy Spirit you need the fire of God without the fire of God coming on you you leave church with all the impurities still on you you go back out with the addictions you go back out with the fears you go back out with all the confusion but when you come to the altar and you allow the fire of God to come on you it burns it all away glory to God someone say I need the fire Jesus Christ himself prophesied in John 7, 37, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, come on, out of his heart will flow, glory to God, rivers, not one river, but multiple rivers of living water. Because inside of you, there's a river of healing. Inside of you, there's a river of prosperity. There's a river of joy. There's a river of blessing. There's a river of deliverance. It's all in you right now when the Holy Spirit comes. You just got to stir that up. You just got to stir that up. Jesus said, don't go to church. He said, come to me. You see, some of you say, I'm dry. I, I go to that church, but I'm dry. No, no, you're dry because you're going to church, but you're not coming to Jesus. Come to church, but come to Jesus first. Go to Jesus. Listen, you can come to Jesus every single day of your life and be filled up, topped up, and just, Lord, just, just, so, just so filled with his power and his spirit that you could walk into the deadest of deadest churches, it won't affect you. It won't affect you. But if you are empty, devoid of any time with Jesus, you can go to the most on fire church in Sydney, like Awesome Church right here, and you can be sitting down there going, oh, it's all the fuss about. I'm dry. You know, or like, are they, you know, like the classic one, you know, just not being fed anymore. How many times have I heard that? Well, you know what? My, I don't have to feed my daughters any longer. I did that when they were in the high chair with a little spoon and fed them in their mouths, you know, helicopter, aeroplane, here it come, yum. But I don't do that now. And if I tried to do that now, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> there are some believers who still want to be spoon-fed after 10 years, after 15 years. They still have that nonsense, I'm just not being fed. Wake up, baby. It's time for you to grow up. <laughs> it's time to get out of that high chair. Don't you find it too uncomfortable? Verse 39 says, but this is spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing, come on someone, whom those believing, how many believers do we have, in him would receive for the Holy Spirit. If you're a believer, you qualify for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost is a Jewish feast, hence Pentecost Sunday. It's a Jewish feast, not a Christian feast. 
It's actually a Jew. The Jews right now all over Wallara and, you know, over there and there, Mossman and St. Ives, what are they doing? They are celebrating Pentecost. Hallelujah. Us humble Christians out here at Rydalmere, glory to God. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pentecost is a Jewish feast that celebrates the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. That's what they're celebrating. Right now in the synagogues, well, they would have done it yesterday. They're celebrating and they're saying, you know, thank you, God, for giving the Torah to Moses on Mount Sinai. Well, God picked that same day in Jerusalem when they were all in Jerusalem celebrating, saying, thank you for the Torah. God, all glory to God, on that same day, some 2,000 years ago, God said, I've given you my word. Now I'm going to give you my spirit. Glory to God. And right there, right there, revival came. Revival came. Right there. You want to read a book about revival? Read the book of Acts. And revival starts at Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, just like this. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Glory to God. They began to what? Speak in? Come on, give me a demonstration. Don't be ashamed. Let it rip, man. Let that tongues of heaven flow. Just like the day of Pentecost, the tongues were flowing. The rivers were flowing. What a beautiful sound. What a beautiful sound that it, listen, if you're in a church and the pastor says, don't you speak in tongues in here, get out of that place and get to a church where you can speak your heavenly language to your father without any restraint, without any blockage or hindrance, because tongues is the manifestation of the fire. It's the fire. I'm just burning, baby. When I'm praying in tongues, glory to God, I ain't speaking to you, so stop mocking me. The Bible says in Act, in 1 Corinthians 4, 2, it says, He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. You were speaking to God a few minutes. Come on, do it again. Speak to God. Tap the person next to you and say, don't worry, I'm speaking to God, not to you. Stop that religious spirit stirring up in you. I bind any religious demon. I say, you get out now. Get out. You ain't welcome. Out of this place. Well, did you hear them all talking tongues? They weren't talking to you. They were talking to God. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, glory to God, he speaks mysteries. Jesus said in Acts 1 verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me. Well, Witnessing Jesus means, witness, you're making an accurate testimony of what you have observed, experienced, or encountered. So, if you're going to be a witness to Jesus, base it on the Gospels and nothing else like man-made religion. Don't base your witness on tradition. Don't base your witness on what man says. You base it on what the Gospel of St. Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John says, because that's the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For the disciples, they were witnesses. 
And what did they witness? They gave witness to the power of the resurrection. Acts 4.33, and with great power, come on, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And it says, great grace was upon them all. The NLT says, the apostles testified powerfully to what? The resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great blessing was upon them all. Listen, the moment a preacher begins to speak about the resurrection of Jesus, that's a recipe for miracles. Oh, man. When you start, glory to God, what they were basically preaching was that Jesus proved who he said he was by rising from the dead, thereby demonstrating that he was, come on, greater than the curse, greater than sin. It couldn't hold him down, and he was greater than death. Not even a 50-ton stone could keep Jesus in because that resurrection power, it just it blew that stone away. That's the power of resurrection anointing. Glory to God. Glory to God. The apostles understood. The apostles understood. When I read the book of Acts, I'm reading, the, I'm reading it from the eyes of an apostle. I can relate to the apostles. I can resonate. I'll never be as great as them. But as a shepherd of a church, I can look at what, how they ministered. And I see clearly in the book of Acts, these guys were unbelievable. These guys were miraculous in what they... Come on, someone. When you walk past and your shadow heals people, that's an anointing. That's a level of anointing. We ain't there yet. But that's what Peter had. He had such an anointing that his own shadow was healing people. Glory to God. The apostles understood Christ rising from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit meant that nothing could hold a person down. Nothing could hold a person down. Romans 8, 11, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. See, that's the thing. Is it living in you? He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. This means that no sin, no curse, no demonic spirit, no setback in your life can keep you down if you allow the power of the Holy Spirit to transform your life. Nothing can hold you down. Tap the person next to you and say, nothing can hold you down in Christ. Now lift your hands and say, nothing can hold me down. Nothing can hold you down. Because that anointing's inside of you right now. Glory be to God. I'm talking about miracle power on demand through Christ Jesus. Awesome church. When someone hears about a miracle taking place, it lifts a person's spirit. In other words, it brings hope that just maybe, just maybe something good could happen to me. Well, I got news. Something good is going to happen to you. And hope is the key ingredient. And hope comes from God's Word. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, What is faith? It is the confident assurance, watch it, that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us even though we cannot see it up ahead. Hope can see. Faith says the thing that you're hoping for that's ahead of you, whatever that might be, by faith, it's achievable. By faith, you can grab hold of that thing. You see, the Voice Bible says there are realities you've never seen. The King James, New King James says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, come on, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
The evidence. It's the evidence. Well, what is the evidence that proves that what we're hoping for by faith will manifest in my life? The evidence is God's Word, the Holy Bible. You see, my job is to call it in by using God's Word as my guarantee. What I've got to do is I've got to call it in just like God called in light. He said, light come forth and there was light. You see, this is evidence. The Holy Bible is evidence. The Holy Bible is a legal document. It's legal. It was written by a judge. Because this legal document exists, it means that when I go to the legal document, God is bound by His Word. Do you know how powerful His Word is? The Word of God is so powerful, it's even above God's name. Oh, Pastor Gary, the Bible says that Jesus is the name above every other name. Yeah, but the Word consumes that. Psalm 138 verse 2. Have a look at this. Psalm 138 verse 2. What does it say? You say, why, why are you elevating the Word? Psalm 138 verse 2. Look what it says. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your Word above all your name. You say, well, you're demoting Jesus. The Word is Jesus. Do you remember when Jesus said, I can't swear by anyone higher than myself because I am the highest? The word is so powerful. This is a legal document. If you, church, if you get a revelation of this in the next few minutes, it'll change your life for what you're hoping and believing for. You got to go to the legal document. Once you go to the legal document and you know what belongs to you, all you need to do is call it in. You see, Romans 4, verse 17, I think it is. Romans 4, 17. What does it say? Again, let's go to the legal document. Romans 4, 17. For as it is written. Someone say, it's written. I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed God, who gives life to the dead, and what does he do? Calls those things which do not exist as though they did. See, Abraham was the father of faith. What did he do? He called in his son and his son came forth. Look at it from the Amplified Bible, if you have that. The Amplified says, as it is written in Scripture, I have made you a father of many nations in the sight of him in whom he believed. That is, God who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. The Word is so powerful that you can call in what does not exist in your life right now. You can call it in. Why? It's a legal document. Look, look, look. What have I got in my hand here? I've got, got a driver's license, right? This driver's license is a legal document from the New South Wales government. The driver's license tells me as a legal document that the person whose name is on this document and the picture of this person on this legal document, that proves to me he exists. And I believe it because it's a legal document. If you found a scrap of paper when you were going shopping this afternoon and it had someone's name on it, you would just throw it in the bin. But if you found a driver's license, a legal document, you'd pick that up and you'd say, glory to God. Reminds me last year, I went to Westfield one night, went down there with one, during lockdown, had my mask on, walking down the escalator and I see a shining thing down there at the bottom. I go down there, it's a big fat wallet. And I'm thinking, glory to God. <laughs> Money cometh to me now. I got down to the bottom of the escalator, look left, look right, look for any cameras, picked up that juicy fat wallet. Glory to God. Opened it up. I, you know why it was fat and juicy? It had a policeman's badge in it. True story. It was a police officer's wallet. I looked at it, I opened it up, and I saw her face, I saw her ID, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, glory to God, put it in my jacket. I thought, whoa, this is, this, imagine what this could do for me. Hallelujah. Man, I could just show that badge at Macca's and get free cheeseburgers. I, I, could, I could do so many things with this. I get into the car, you know, I'm sitting there, and then I felt the Holy Spirit say, what are you doing? 
turn around, go straight to the police station, and you hand that, give, because if they find you with that on you, you'll get locked up. So it's better that you go and bring it to them. So I go to the police station there at Burwood. You know, they're all in there. The sergeant comes to me, oh, we're going to do it for you, you know what I mean? I said, well, I think maybe this would be a, you know, I think you need this. He goes, what is it? He opens it up, he goes, he looks at me, he goes, where did you get this from? I said, well, I found it at Westfields. It's a shopping centre. He goes, come with me. I'm thinking, <laughs> that's what you get, right? Go into his office, sit him down. The, the, the commander of the station comes down. He looks at me, he says, where did you get this? I said, I just told you I found it. I said, officer, listen, if I, was gonna, if I had taken that, do you think I'd be here? He goes, no, you wouldn't be here. He said, thank you very much. Called the uh, office, the policewoman. She rang me the next day. She said, thank you, sir. She says, you don't know how much trouble she got into oh, wow. for losing that. Yeah. She got in big trouble. And she said, I'm so glad you found it. Yeah. And I'm waiting for, okay, what's the reward? You know? <laughs> I said, that's all right, officer. You know, that's, I'm just a humble pastor, you know, if I just... Get a praise God. Thank you so much. And then she hang up and glory to God. Anyway, true story, true story. I remember I walked in and Lisa looked at me. She said, what are you, what's, what are you smiling? I said, this is what I found. Hallelujah. So I've got this legal document. This legal document tells me, I think we've established that the person whose name is on this document exists. Now, I'm looking at that person's name, but the problem is I don't see that person. Now, if you take a look around the room, and can anyone tell me if they can see Alessandro anywhere around the room? Is he around here somewhere? I can't see him anywhere. Look down the back there. Is he down the back there? I can't see him. But the document tells me that he exists. I can't see him. But the document tells me that he exists. So what do I do? I go back to the document that tells me in Romans 4.17, call those things that are not as though they were. So what I do is I begin by faith to go to the document and I look at it and I say, Alessandro Altarizio of Concord, New South Wales, come forth in the name of Jesus. Behold the man. All I needed to do was call it in. Thank you, brother. You, give him a hand. He sat patiently in that room for the whole service. Don't worry, there was a screen in there. You, you see, okay, the worship team come up. The hope is the goal setter. Hope is the goal setter. It's like, it's like the thermostat, you know, of what you use to set the air conditioning. So the thermostat, come on, has been set. Once you set the thermostat, that little device on the back wall there, it has no power inside of it. It's just a little keypad. But I have to set the goal. I have to say to that keypad, I want 23 degrees in this auditorium today. Now, once I set the goal, the power of the motor that's on the roof, glory to God, as soon as I set it, the power of that motor kicks in and it begins to blow that air into that auditorium until the goal that I set has been met. What I've got to do now is I've got to start to set goals. And once I set the goal, the power of God is going to kick in and manifest. So now it's time to set the thermostat. You are the thermostat. The Word will encourage you to set the goal. So you've got to take hold of 3 John. Come on. 3 John 1 verse 2 for your healing. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prosper. Set that in your thermostat right now and watch the power bring it up. You've got to set the thermostat. Come on. For wealth, Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Set it in right now. What about just for life in general? Take hold of Philippians 4.13 and set the thermostat. I can do all things. Come on. Who Christ, who strengthens me. Come on, don't turn off on me now. Let me turn that thermostat back up, Lord. 
You've got to set it. I set the thermostat here this morning. And I trusted that once I set it, the power kicks in. But you know what happens? When it's reached, what happens? The motor turns off. So you better make sure that whatever you set it to, you set it high enough so that once you get there, it doesn't shut off, but it keeps going. Come on, someone. I already said, this is a beautiful, this is a beautiful sanctuary that the Lord has blessed us with, but don't get too comfortable. We've outgrown it. We're not going to be here for much longer. I'm lifting, I'm setting the thermostat. I'm setting the thermostat. 1,000 seat auditorium. Glory to God. 1,000 seat auditorium. I'm setting that thermostat up. I'm already looking. We're not a multiple church service meeting. We have one service at 10 a.m. We finish when the Holy Spirit says it's over. So rather than have three services, let's have one huge one and let the Holy Ghost have His way. Because let me tell you, the God I serve is the God of unusual miracles. Unusual miracles. What about Acts 19 verse 11? I think it is. What does it say? Now God, look at it. God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even, come on, handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to heal the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Glory to God. He took out a handkerchief like this. He prayed over it and he said, in the name of Jesus, let the person who gets this handkerchief be completely healed and delivered in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you might laugh, but that's Bible. Listen to this testimony that someone gave me just last week at the prayer meeting. Hi, pastors. During an altar call, I asked Pastor Gary to pray over sealed water, a bottle of water, a sealed bottle of water. As a friend's son suffers from mental illness, which bad spirits of suicidal thoughts torment him. He got admitted to a hospital and upon waiting because he was wanting to bring self-harm. The hospital said, we're going to keep you for two months in the mental health ward. They just keep no. kept sedating him no. with medication and he just felt drowsy. The water bottle that Pastor Gary prayed on, I gave to my friend who is saved to give to that young man to drink when she visits him at the hospital. The young boy drank the water which was prayed on. Glory to God, he was discharged from the hospital and has gone home. Glory to God. That happened. That happened. That miracle water was here. The Lord blessed that miracle water in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that the power of your spirit would manifest upon this water. And in the name of Jesus, let the miracles flow. Let the miracles flow. Let it flow. Come on, someone. Come on, someone. Come on, someone. Oh. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, come on. You need a miracle. Get out of your seat. Come down now. Come down now. The Spirit of God is here. The anointing is here. Come on, run, run, run. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Get down right now. Oh God. Miracle power. Miracle power. 
Lift your hands. Lift your hands to heaven. Oh, glory. Glory, 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 glory. The anointing is here. Oh, the anointing is here. Break every chain. Heal every sickness. Deliver every oppression. Meet every need. Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. Sing it out. The glory is here. Come on, reach out. Just believe. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Yeah. If there is, there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Because your name is power. Your Can I have the pastors up on the platform, please? All the pastors on the platform. Keep singing. Jesus from the, mountain. the Spirit of God is moving Jesus right now. In the streets. Jesus in the darkness. All the pastors. Every enemy. Jesus. Jesus all my family. I speak the holy name. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus in the street. That's right. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my Whoa. family. Oh, I speak the holy name. Yeah. Jesus. Hey. Oh. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name Lift your hands to heaven, everyone, at the altar.
There is such a strong anointing here today. God is going to confirm His Word. But right now, every person at the altar, I want to pray before we start ministering for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you're at church today and you love Jesus, but you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to get out of your seat, come to the altar. If you're already at the altar, I want you to get ready to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna pray that the Holy Spirit will fall and baptise you afresh. Even if you are filled already, I pray that God will burn and lift the heat up of that anointing in your life. So come to the altar. If you wanna be baptised in the Holy Spirit, when the fire falls, you will start to speak in other tongues. Don't think about it. Just let the Spirit flow. Open your mouth and begin to praise God and watch the tongues flow. You'll hear it, you speak it. Lift your hands. Heavenly Father, I thank You this morning. Everyone in the congregation, reach your hands out. Start praying in the Spirit, church. Everyone in the congregation, start praying in the Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask that You would baptise these people here today with a fresh baptism of the fire of the Holy Spirit. I pray that it will descend upon these people and in the Name of Jesus Christ, they shall begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gives the utterance. The supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit will be deposited and the manifestation of Your power will be revealed. So right now, lift your hands. I baptise you in the Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let the fire of God come upon you right now. Fire God! Fire God! Fresh fire, Lord! Father in heaven, I release your anointing to heal. I release the anointing for miracles. Believe it and you'll see it. Expect it and you'll experience it. 
demand it and it will manifest. Come on, I want you to make a demand on the God right now. Make a demand for that miracle. Make a demand in the name of Jesus right now. Come on. Make the demand. Pastors, go right ahead. Start praying for people. Ask them what they want prayer for. Ask them what they want prayer for. And agree with them for their healing, for their deliverance, for their miracle to manifest right here. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost, saints. The anointing is at work right now.
I just feel the, those that are watching on the live stream right now, I just feel God's presence just prompted me. Wherever you're watching, reach your hands out right now. I'm really believing, just like the parable that I shared of the centurion, just say the word and my servant will be healed. Well, I take hold of the word of healing for your life. And I say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, receive healing in your body right now. Receive it in your... Be healed in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I release your anointing. Touch that person right now from head to toe. Fill the room where they are right now with your glory. And let that anointing dissolve every sickness and infirmity. And let the fire of the Holy Spirit burn away all the impurities in the name of Jesus. Brett, come up here, brother. There are people, the Lord's prompting me, there are people, Pastor Brett, I should say, there are people, come here, come here on, on the line, on, the, on that line, the camera's right down there. There are people, God's going to give you words of knowledge now for people watching this. I just sense in my spirit and he told me, get Brett to pray. Thank you, Lord. Right now, right now, I'm praying for bad backs. Everyone out there, everyone in here as well, but everyone out there, That's you right. got a bad back. That's right. you got a bad back. Yes. Get ready. If you can stand, stand. You've got a bad back. Have a chair behind you because the power of God's going to come upon you, Father, right now. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I drive out bad backs right now. Bad backs released. Bad backs are healed. Bad backs are set free. I release now the anointing of the Holy Ghost going right through every muscle, every nerve, every joint, every vertebrae right now in bad backs released in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, more, more, more. You're out there with the bad back online. What I want you to start to do as soon as you gather yourself, just begin to test, walk up and down, walk back and forth around your room. Just start to walk. If you're in this building, you do the same. Start to walk, start to walk. Now I want you to bend down and test. Bend down, test, touch your toes and test right now. And find your freedom now in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. And um, on there, there's a chat, there's a chat on the, there's a way they can write in, Pastor Gary. Yeah. There's a chat. Just forward awesomechurch.com. Yeah, awesomechurch.com. Just send the email right in the, in, the, in the description, wherever, and just tell your testimony. Send it in, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Amen. There's also, there's also people there. We've got darkest depression. Darkest depression. Right. We've seen this lift. Just in one last week, we had a guy with the darkest, deepest, dark depression that he'd had for 20 years. He he'd lost all his emotion. He 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 was a father, but he 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 fathered by logic. Wow. Not because he loved, but by logic. Every decision, every reaction in relationships was logic. And the power of God has set him free. Right. You've got depression right now. I'm telling you, the power of heaven is ready to set you free yes, yes, in the yes. name of Jesus. Over the airways right, right now, now, every person with dark depression, every person who's under a cloud, every person who's got the curse Whoa. upon them of depression right now yeah. in the name of Jesus. I break that off their life. I set them free now. Yes. I said now, now in the name of Jesus, depression lift. A spirit of fear, I break your power. You're going right now. Low self-worth and self-hatred and self-harm loose. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I release your healing power right now into every heart, into every soul, into every mind. Depression lifts in Jesus' name. Just take a deep breath. Have a glass of water. Take a deep breath and just move around and, and, and feel the depression lift. 
lift, lift. We had a man who had this 20 years of depression. He said, as soon as you said that, he said, I felt it running out of my fingers onto the ground. Wow. It was running out of the end of my hands onto the ground and I'm free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's running out. It's dropping on the ground. For you online, it's dropping on the ground right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. If you get any words, you let me know. Hallelujah. So we're praying for people online as well. A lot of people watch us throughout the week. Spirit of God. Holy Spirit. Yeah, let it rain. Let it rain. Come up here, Laurelie. Yeah. God of us, As Pastor Gary started to pray for people online, I got the name Samantha and I also got the number 20 and 5. And Samantha, I just feel God saying to you today that He's got you and He's causing a multiplication on your life and a breakthrough. And those numbers are significant because it's almost like where there's been limits for you, where there's been a, 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 a God's saying, up your faith. He's causing you to raise your faith because the limits are going to be broken off and there's going to be a, a breakthrough that's going to take place and, and increase what you've been believing for because that's caused the limits. So right now, we release the power to break through and those limits, the containment smashed in Jesus' name. Wow, 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 wow. wow. Now, this is uh, Laura Lee Colley from Destiny Ministries, Prophetic Ministries. And... Um, so and Samantha, email in and, and confirm. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Awesome. If you, could, you have any other words for anyone watching? Yeah, actually, the, the name um, Terry, I feel it's a male. Terry, I just feel like that where there's, that there's been uh, brokenness in your body, there's been broken limbs, but also there's a broken spirit. And it's like you felt like it, it, it comes again, it happens again. It, it, uh, it, it, you, every time you step up, you feel like you're being pulled down again. But God says He comes today. And even, I just feel like you've, you've only been on part of this this morning and go back and listen to the recording because your miracle is here for you today. There's healing in your body. There's healing in your finances. There's healing in your family. That thing which you thought was lost is being returned to you. Terry, we release that to you yes. now and we declare the spirit of Miracles in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. You keep prophesying if you get anything. Can I pray for you? Yes. What's your name? My, 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 my. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for my, my. Yes, it's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day for you. And those things which you've been believing for, those things which uh, there's been a, a tension and a lay hold, God says, as you lay hold and do not look back from this day forward, you're going to walk. You're going to walk in a significance. You're going to walk in a, in a victory like you've never known. So don't look back. Don't look back and know that as you step into the things that you've been hoping for, God says, I'm renewing you and causing you to step into that space of miracles. Yes, those miracles are for you and, and that family member that you're believing for healing for. God says, I'm releasing the healing, the healing of soul, this healing of body. I'm causing you, to, you and your family to come into a, a place of significance where there's been uh, some holdups, there's been a, it's almost like a border closures where there's been some closures around about you. God says, I'm opening up. Speak to those borders, speak to those closures, speak to the man that's holding it up. And we declare even now there's a, there's a, 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 a release and, and union in Jesus' Name. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. 
praise God. Oh, in my You know, on Wednesday night at the prayer meeting, I had a prophetic word, and uh, it was just three words. And so many people the next day emailed me, contacted me, and said, Pastor Gary, you don't know what you just said. It's happening. And it just came out at the end of the prayer meeting. It was powerful. Our Wednesday night meetings are miracle services now. Yes, we pray, but we see the power of God. So I want to encourage you this Wednesday, 7.30, come. And it is an awesome night right here at the sanctuary. Now, I'm going to share the same word because I feel prompted. Because you've got to remember this. Whenever you watch the news, whenever you watch the news, and you get afraid, that came from Satan. So whenever you hear the news media say, well, that COVID's going to kill you. Well, you ought to be grateful that you're still here today and it didn't touch you. Sure, it may have came onto you, but it didn't kill you. Then they talk about recession. Then they talk about job losses. Then they talk about rates, then they talk about energy crisis, then they talk about that. You see, all those words are designed to make you fearful. It's almost like the devil's moved from sickness now to the area of wealth. But he always attacks health and wealth. They're the two greatest fears in society today. Ask any psychologist. People fear health and wealth. They're the two areas. They fear getting sick. They fear getting poor, losing their job, losing their money. Now, if you're in the world, I'd be afraid. But if you're in the kingdom of God, there's no fear in this house. So can I just give you a good word? Because the Holy Spirit gave me this. I said it and it's not your first reaction. You have to really meditate on it. And it's found in 2 Chronicles and it talks about a queen Jubilee, everything's happening with the Queen. Well, the Queen of Sheba, she went to Solomon's palace. When she walked in, and you know, the temple of the Lord was overlaid with what? Come on, gold. The floors were gold. The ceiling, gold. Look around. Brick, tin, carpet. In God's temple, gold. Now, despite the fact that God's trying to say to the world that nothing's too good enough for me, He's demonstrating something. He's saying to the people of God, the gold is good. In fact, it's so good in my kingdom, the streets are made of gold in heaven. When the Queen of Sheba walked in, She was so overcome by Solomon's wealth. The Bible says she fainted. It says she fainted. Right here in 2 Chronicles 9, it says here in verse 4, there was no more spirit left in her. In the Hebrew, it says literally she walked in. She thought she was wealthy. She saw Solomon's wealth and she went, oh, and she fainted. Now that's a type and a shadow, it's a picture. It's God trying to say to His children, have no fear in this season. Reject what the world is saying and be careful that you don't agree with it. Well, did you hear what they said on the news, sweetheart? We're gonna have to, oh, we're in trouble now. Oh, what are we gonna, turn the, you gotta be careful, don't agree with fear. When you agree with fear, it comes on to you. In the book of Job, it says, that which I greatly feared has come upon me. Job spoke his misery into his own life. Here's the word from the Lord. And I tell you, as I am a man of God for whatever it's worth, I know God spoke to me on Wednesday night. And He gave me that word for this church. 
I gave a prophecy last month. Remember that, that prophecy? You should go over it. It's online. You can see it. I delivered it at the end of my message a number of weeks ago. If you want a copy of it, email me. I've emailed over 100 to people in this church. They wanted a copy written prophecy about the season we're in. You ought to take hold of that. It's amazing what I prophesied. We're hearing about it now. Here it is. Are you ready? I want you to receive it. I want you to take hold of it. And I want it to settle in your spirit in this season. Because I neutralise the devil's words. I rebuke him. I only believe what God's Word says. And the Word that the Lord gave me on Wednesday night for Awesome Church was this in this season. You ready? Three words. Gold in abundance. Gold in abundance. Come on, take it. Receive that. Gold in abundance. Listen, Solomon was the wealthiest person on earth, but Sheba comes and brings him even more things. But see, that's God. Exceedingly abundantly. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. You will have no need this year in 2022 or 2023 and beyond. Every need shall be met according to His riches in glory. That's the guarantee. It's written in the guarantee book. My God, come on, say it with me. My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in glory. And go and turn the heater on. And don't sit there freezing, afraid. You're going to run out. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Now, that doesn't mean you're to be not, you know, you've got to be sensible. That means if you leave the house, turn it off. Don't let it run all day. Well, my God will supply, Pastor Gary said. So I just left it on for the whole week. Yeah, well, you better pray that He supplies when you get the bill. But God loves His children. He's not going to let any one of His children suffer or go without. You just got to believe Him for it. You say, thank you, Father. You're our loving Father. You're going to meet every need. Whatever the devil throws at us, you'll increase. You'll increase. Because we serve the God of increase. What am I doing? I'm trying to bring hope. I'm turning the thermostat up in your life. So once I turn that thermostat, that motor of God kicks in and it begins to release His supernatural power into your life. Gold in abundance. In abundance. In abundance. Don't you just love the Holy Spirit? Don't you just love the moving and the operate? You know, right now, anything could happen when you wait on God. See, some people, they couldn't wait. They had to go to Macca's. They had to run out. And the stomach is the God. I've got to eat. I got a phone call from my intestines saying, feed me. It's true. You know, Adam and Eve fell into sin over food. Think about it. Food. Esau lost the blessing because of a bowl of lentils. How many people love lentil soup? Yum, eh? Delicious on a day like today. Carol's going to make some lentil soup now. Lentil soup. Esau lost his birthright blessing over a bowl of soup. When the anointing lifts, I will close the meeting. Guaranteed. I don't want to be here one minute more than I have to be. 
But if the anointing's here, I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. When God says, there were people that I wanted to touch, why did you shut the meeting? See, there are people God wants to touch right now, still. Unusual miracles, not just healing, not just salvation and deliverance, but provisional power. We got to believe God of the provisional, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You are so anointed. You are so anointed. You carry an anointing on you that's going to take you to the top. I release that I speak it over you. In your place of employment, whatever you do, the Spirit of, you keep working with integrity, you keep working hard, you keep being faithful, you keep serving and tithing, and you watch what God does. He's going to take you to the top. Come on, say it with me. I'm going to the top. That's your inheritance. That promotion is coming now in Jesus' Name. Not enough is talked about provisional power in churches. Because, you know, I'll be honest, most messages are give, give to the church and then you'll get well, hang on a second. That is true. That's a biblical principle. But what about the God, Jehovah Jireh, the provider? My girls, they don't have to do anything for me, for me to want to bless them. I'll bless them even if they gave me nothing. Because I love them. How much more our Father in heaven loves you, that He would give you and shower you with His goodness. That's God. The God we serve is the God who's going to take care of His church. Man, oh man. We'll get through this year and we'll get through next year. We will. You'll still be here. Praising God. I declare that this time next year, you'll be even wealthier than what you are now. I speak that over your life. You'll be even more wealthier. More. The Bible says, believe the prophets and you shall prosper. That's what it says. Believe the prophets and you shall prosper. My job is to turn the thermostat up, to build your faith up. I'm not God. I'm just a vessel to bring faith. God is the one. Jesus said, according to your faith, it will be done for you. My job is just to lift the thermostat up, bring faith. And I love it. Because it makes the devil mad. You know that, Silvio? Man. Kundarabasanda. There's a contract that's going to come into your hands in the next 12 months. When you get the phone call, this is what's going to happen. Give me a phone, someone. This is what's going to happen. Giselle, you're not going to believe this. We just got the go ahead. You see that? That's what's going to happen. It's going to knock you off your feet. The size of it. In the next 12 months, it shall surely come to pass. Now receive it, brother. Because God has seen your heart. 
when others have not. God has recognised your spirit when others have not. Everything you have done for my kingdom, I have seen, says the Lord, and I will reward you. The rewards have started, but the big reward's coming. So get ready for it. In the next 12 months, mark today, mark it today. What's today? The 4th, the 5th, 5th of June. 12 months. Give God praise. Hallelujah. What a beautiful song. My, my, my. Lift your hands to Him. Awesome church, Sydney. I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace. May the presence, power, protection and prosperity of the Lord Jesus Christ be upon you and upon every household. Those watching on the live stream, those not here today, may your blessing touch these beautiful people. And we thank you, Father. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for pouring it out, Lord. What a blessing you are, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this church. This is your church. Have your way every day in our lives and in this meeting. Do as you wish. It's your church. 
and we give you all the praise for it. And all of God's people said, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Praise God.